Hey everybody, so we're doing something a little different today, Ben. We usually review video games, but today we're reviewing a book called The History of the Future. It's kind of like a video game. It's kind of like, I mean, it's about video games yeah. and hardware and stuff, but its official title is The History of the Future, Oculus, Facebook, and the Revolution that Swept Virtual Reality. Ben, you and I have both read this book. Yes. Uh, Blake, the author, was kind enough to send us a copy. We really appreciate that. To be honest, Ben and I are both already have already been fans of Blake's work. Yes. Console Wars, his first book. His previous book, Console Wars. Fantastic. Excellent. And let's just say it right out front. This is also fantastic. Oh, it's yes. Perfect. Ben, no, maybe not perfect. Tell me a little bit about this book. All right. So History of the Future is a discussion or a story told more of a like a narrative form, more of a story based form with you know dialogue that probably isn't word for word, but maybe and we'll, we'll maybe talk about that a little bit more in the future, but um, mostly about Palmer Lucky. Really, right. it's about Oculus and the, the way that that company developed, but Palmer Lucky, the founder of Oculus, the person who invented the Rift, um, it's it revolves around him. There's lots of other characters and players in it, but it goes through the journey of Palmer and the journey of Oculus all the way up through the time they were bought out by Facebook and the things that transpired after that. And I really think the angle of doing this about Lucky, I think, was such a fantastic choice. Yes. Because it's clear, like, I don't want to say Blake isn't kind of Lucky, but he is very honest about how he is. Sure. He's awkward. Right. He's weird. He's this nerdy dude that discovered something amazing. And quite frankly, in a lot of ways, got really lucky really lucky <laughs> uh, no pun intended yeah but <clears throat> got lucky the right eyes were on his device and a snowball effect just you know went nuts right and until I mean, it eventually it, you know hit a wall and exploded uh, but, and lucky was lucky but there's also no doubt that right it was brilliance too right yeah, yeah. and so i i want to touch on what you said about the way this book is written um some people didn't like that about console wars mm -hmm. is that this you know console wars we're talking sega nintendo stuff that happened 30 years ago 30 plus yeah and so there's no way to have a verbatim like here's who, who said this and what exactly happened right and so this book has less of that since a lot of it is first-hand accounts from the last five six years whatever right. but also emails that are you know literal yeah copy and paste whatever emails and recorded phone com or recorded conversations um, of meetings and stuff like that where people are all in the room what I will say though is when there are times that it's more fictitious I don't want to say fictitious it's not the right word for it right but the times that it is written out and it's you know there's some liberties I think Blake did an even better job in yes. this book and not that it was terrible at any points but I think it just felt even more natural. Did you feel that as well? I think so. And I think part of that probably has to do with having so much of their other correspondence and other, you kind of get to know the way a person talks. Whereas with console wars and not to just compare this book versus console wars, but of course a lot of people are familiar with console wars. Um, with that, you have people who are not around to give you their part of the discussion and you don't get to know them. So when you're writing their piece, even if it is verbatim, what they said, just the way that, the way to communicate that is not always easy. Right. So, the, yeah, it's definitely more of a natural flow. And uh, I just think it's um, not that Console Words was poorly written, but this is written excellently. Yeah, you can tell it's definitely like he he built up his chops in yeah. the first book. And this is really like time to shine right, right here. Right. I wanted to talk a little bit about the, I guess, the plot, what actually happens. Mm -hmm. The story of Oculus is super fascinating and i don't want to reveal too much because obviously you should read the book to find out but don't go on wikipedia either yeah don't go on wikipedia you know or anything that you may have seen already just forget it right. just you know wipe <laughs> that from your mind but, but let this be your origin i love and i already mentioned this but it's this story about this young guy who has a dream right and he has this dream that he sticks to for so long is willing to go to great lengths and sacrifice in order to see that dream fulfilled and then has this incredible payoff where you know facebook buying oculus which you know some people might look at as a bad thing but huge payday obviously sure, sure and 
achieving the dream, his dream of bringing VR to the masses. But I don't know. I feel weird saying spoilers, but everyone knows that Palmer Lucky fired from Facebook. And that is like the heart wrenching part of this right. book right. Um, that I think makes it, you know, the cherry on top of how interesting and how fascinating it is sure. in a bad way, I guess. And it's entirely possible that there are things we just don't know about that are that were not made public and maybe Palmer didn't want to reveal or whatever. Right. That affected the reasons he was fired from Oculus and Facebook. Um, but it seems entirely political. Right. Um, so that's even the, the more concerning part is no matter, you know, where you're at in the political spectrum, unless you're actively hurting people, for me, it's uh, it's disappointing to see good work get punished for something not related to it. Let's talk about that specifically. The story about the creation of this book is, I would say, almost as interesting as the book itself. Yes. Blake Harris had unparalleled access to Facebook. That's what he told us directly. You can listen to our episode of the HP podcast where we had him on. It's a fantastic episode. We had not read the book yet at the time of that recording. It wasn't out yet. Yeah. But he had unparalleled access, was writing this story, and then everything went down with Palmer. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, you know, Blake was asking questions and suddenly that access was cut off. Right. Completely. Right. Well, what do you even think about that, Ben? It's it's well, crazy. I mean, just the fact that there are emails from Facebook that contradict what he knew, what what many people knew to be the truth. Right. Uh, and that's about the time the the correspondence was cut off. Is just you know that says something to me is that they were trying to hide something. I want to give one thing about this book. Blake says this in our interview, and it it's what propelled my interest to attend very specifically with, you know, if if Blake is to be believed, which I believe he is, he lists all of his sources. He had all this access. It is clear as day that Mark Zuckerberg committed a federal crime right um, throughout this book and nothing happened. Yeah. And it's it's crazy. You know, you look at Facebook, one of the most powerful I, I want more than just company, like powerful entities yes. in the world has yeah. direct control in a lot of ways over its users yeah. in ways that I don't think we realize our minds. Yeah. Just the way that we think. Yeah. And, you know, completely lying and committing crimes. Like, right. <laughs> I don't know any better way to dress it up than that. It's it's a fascinating read. And, and it's also interesting how nonchalantly it's presented right uh you know blake did a good job of not blowing it out of proportion and and presenting everything it's just you know here are the facts but it's amazing you're like reading something you're like oh that's really interesting wait that is huge that mm -hmm. could send a man to prison like yeah just and it's just there for you to read and digest the way you want it ben final thoughts or mm -hmm. any other stuff we missed that you want to mention about this book that we didn't yet i just want to say that like there are a lot of books out there that are like oral histories or or whatever that are not presented as well as this book and yeah overall we we're discussing some of the content but i want to talk about the fact that blake wrote this book in a very approachable manner if you like stories if you like recent history anything and you're afraid that's going to be boring it's not uh it's written like a story like a novel really yeah and that's the thing is that I'm so much now, I'm not so much now a reader as I used to be. Uh -huh. It's much harder for me to get through books. It's right. harder for me to grab my attention, probably because my phone is making me brain dead. Right. You know, that whole deal that everyone's dealing with. This book, though, you can see how thick it is. It's a big, beefy book. And once I got into it, it was like every spare second I could get. Uh, it, it's a page turner right. through and through. And it's so funny because it's like, hey, this is a book about the tech industry right. and, and, you know, and, and virtual reality. And it's, you know, addicting. Yeah. It's so good. You could give this to your grandma who knows nothing about any of these things, except for everybody's grandma's on Facebook now. Yeah. And she'd still probably find it interesting, even if some of the greater points were missed. I will say this book made me morally conflicted about oculus in mm. a lot of ways i mean i still pre-ordered an oculus quest today <laughs> mere hours ago mere hours ago <laughs> but i did feel conflicted were you as... on facebook today yes 
I mean, everyone's on Facebook today, right? I'm not. I didn't get on Facebook today. Wow. Well, good for you. Did you get a notification from Facebook? Probably. See, that's something. I can't control that. You, they send me emails. Oh, true. All right. Fair enough. Anyway, final verdict. This book is a must read. I mean, if you're into this industry at all, it's yeah. a must read. VR, yeah. gaming, hardware, tech, whatever. It's a right. must read. But honestly, it's really something you have to read no matter what, I'd say. I mean, it's important to our culture, I think, um, not just from the VR perspective, but from the Facebook perspective. You cannot deny how big of an impact Facebook has had on the world right? Uh, and is going to probably still have on the world. And it's just interesting to get in there and see just one small piece of that pie. Yeah, for sure. So the history of the future, we're going to have a link in the description of where you can buy this book on Amazon. And if you buy it from there, it helps us out. Just it doesn't cost anything extra. It's just our right. affiliate link. You know how those work. Small percentage. You should also follow Blake on Twitter. He's a really cool, dude. I'll put a link to his Twitter in there. Also, subscribe to our channel here if you enjoyed this review, because I know we enjoy doing them and that helps us out. We also do game reviews and previews and stuff like that. So we, we think you'll like the content. Hopefully, we hope. maybe. All right. Until next time, we'll see you guys later. Bye.